Hello. It's the Instagram Live I've been telling you about. And uh, I'm Gila Pfeffer, as you know from my handle. And October is Breast Cancer Awareness Month, as you also know from me talking about it lots and lots. So, uh, there's my son joining me. Hello, Kiwi. And today I'm really proud to introduce you to some amazing women, three amazing women uh, who formed an organization called the Cancer Cartel. I'm just going to let them tell you about themselves because I wouldn't do it justice. Um, I'm just waiting for them to log on now. And hello. Thank you for joining. Thank you for joining. Waving back at you. Hi. <clears throat> oh, Cancer Cartel joined. Cancer Cartel, you have to request to be in the video. Okay. Cancer Cartel and Kiwi. Kiwi, if you're watching this, that's my son. T take away your request because I need to get Cancer Cartel up in there. Here we are. Hey guys. Hey. My son almost um, commandeered the meeting. Kiwi, if you're watching this, I love you and I'll call you later. But this is a meeting that I'm having. I think I just lost them. Here we are. Go live with Cancer Cartel. Ain't technology grand. Hey, Tammy. Okay. Can you see us? Can you see us? Yeah, yeah. Us. yeah. I think you got kicked off before because my um, son saw me and got enthused and like asked to join before you did. He was trigger happy. So like, <laughs> get it off. Like, I'll do another That's one. Okay. You can't Go. see ourselves. That's weird. Can you hit cancel? Okay. I'm going to say we're having a little bit of technical difficulties on our end. Gila. So give us just we're going to try in one second. One second. No problem. Worth waiting for everybody out there. Trust me when I tell you they're worth waiting for. I'll give you a bit of background. I don't even remember where I first saw them. It was a couple of months ago. I saw somebody had tagged them and um, you know, the name Cancer Cartel just kind of jumped out at me and I wanted to know more about them. So let's see if we can get them back online. Hi, Tammy. Nice cherries. Nice donuts. Waiting for Cancer Cartel. Hey, guys. Hi. Okay, we're just going with Good. it. We can't see ourselves, but we see you. Well, you look great. Oh, thank you. Can you see all three of us? I see all three of you. Um, okay. You can see yourself because I think it might be a bit disconcerting not to be able to see yourself. Um, my son wants to join when they're gone. Yes, when they're gone, you can talk <laughs> about what comments. a great mom I am and how wonderful I am with teenagers. Um, do you guys have like a, is there a video button maybe that'll help you? I'm wondering because we can't see the comments or anything. We're going to sure try. Are you on an iPad or a phone? Yep, oh, iPad. Yeah. We it might have be. to, s it, well, we've done it on the iPad before, but it's very, hmm. <clears throat> We're going to try hitting cancel one more time and hope that okay. it doesn't kick us out. Hi, Shelly, waving at me. Well, for everybody who's tuning in, thank you for being here. Thank you for taking the time uh, to learn about Cancer Cartel, and especially because it's October, Breast Cancer Awareness Month. Um, but frankly, there's lots of others, other cancers to concern ourselves with, and that's what these three wonderful women are going to talk about. Okay. Hi, guys. I guess we're just going for it. Okay. We can see a little bit on camera. Let's, we all have, we all have challenges to face in life. We've all been through worse, right guys? Way worse than this. We've seen worse. Yeah. So, um, I'm going to kick it over to, uh, these three absolutely badass women. I know that's a very overused term, but trust me when I tell you, you'll hear a bit about them and you'll see what I mean by being incredibly badass. Uh, there are three powerhouses who formed an organization called the Cancer Cartel, and anything with the word cartel in it just sounds like something you want to know about. You know it's going to be powerful, <laughs> well-connected, and, you know, successful. So I'm going to keep it up to Carrie. Carrie is the one on the left. She can't see that I'm pointing. Yeah. Thank you, Shelly. So Carrie, <laughs> why, don't, why don't you guys, uh, starting with Carrie, tell us a bit about yourselves, where you are, and why you're doing what you're doing. Absolutely. So I'm Carrie Salmonson. Um, my background is varied. I have had, my life has been, you know, retail, business development, all kinds of fun stuff. Um, and, you know, having survived cancer multiple times, I just knew there was something bigger. 
And I've just kind of felt like there was just kind of a hole in my heart, like just searching for this calling that I knew was out there. I knew that I loved people. I knew that I loved helping others. And I just had to find somewhere to direct that passion. And the magic happened when Katie and I came up with the idea for Cancer Cartel. So now we're on this incredible mission together and I couldn't be happier and I love it. Okay, over to you, Shelly. <laughs> Hello, my name is Shelly. I'm a breast cancer and skin cancer survivor. Um, I have a seven-year-old daughter who is our little miracle girl. She was born out of, um, when I started, right before I started my chemo, um, they told me my ovaries were gonna be, um, um, what do you call it? Destroyed. Them? Destroyed from the chemo. <laughs> so they harvested my embryo. We did like a embryo, froze our embryos. Um, a year later after all my treatment, we started the process of um, having her. She was the very last embryo that survived. And our other sister, this is my sister Katie, but our, another sister of ours carried her for us, my husband and I. So she, she was our surrogate. So she's kind of our miracle. So um, I do this all for her. I mean, she, she knows my story, our story. But um, yeah, I try to tell her that's why we're, we're out here helping other people because it costs a lot of money to do that. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah, luckily, I had a savings, but most people you know, out there probably have to make that choice pretty quickly. And it's a very expensive choice. Um, and so I was fortunate enough to leave when she turned three, my corporate job. And then these two um, came to me when she entered kindergarten and I could not be happier. This is really what I was born to do. What I was, um, you know, why I went through what I all, everything I went through and what I did was because of this. So to do this. Worth it. Yeah, for sure. So I'm Katie Tinney. <laughs> I survived non-Hodgkin's <laughs> lymphoma and skin cancer. And I am five years out from my journey. I had a stem cell transplant five years ago. And uh, me and Shelly, actually, for several years ap after she was diagnosed with cancer and went through it, we had talked about doing something together at some point, something funner. She was sick of being in the corporate world. And um, I was an entrepreneur, I always have been. And so we had talked about doing something together always. And then after my battle with cancer, which was long and super hard, <laughs> And me and Carrie came up with this awesome idea. I got home and called Shelly, and here we are, doing, living the dream, doing what we're all meant to do. Amazing. <clears throat> I mean, so, yeah, you've, you've kind of, that touches on the next question, which is, you know, you're all three cancer survivors, and um, there are people who will endure difficult times in their lives, and it'll shape and mold them and direct them in different ways. And clearly, <clears throat> what surviving cancer multiple cancers not that it's competition but like <laughs> yeah way to go um you know you've obviously turned it into a positive and decided that uh you know you want to help others have a a less burdensome experience and as you say cancer is super hard treatment is super hard but the expenses are enormous, not even, you know, putting the medical treatment aside. Um, when we were talking a few weeks back, you were talking about all of the things that fall by the wayside because suddenly those funds are diverted to uh, medical related things and um, things that you now need support with that you wouldn't have needed before. So can you guys tell me, I guess, first of all, tell everybody what, why did you call it Cancer Cartel and what does Cancer Cartel do? And then what does Cancer Cartel want to do? Yes. Okay, that's a great question. So Cancer Cartel was created with the need and knowing that cancer is freaking expensive. Katie and I, when we came up with the initial idea, that's kind of where our conversation went. You know, cancer increases your living expenses exponentially. And it's not just, like you said, it's not just medication and hospital bills. It's the fuel to get back and forth to treatment. It's parking at the hospital. It's making these horrible <laughs> life choices like your daughter's ballet yeah. or life-saving medication and having to let your family down. And I mean, it's just, it's terrible. Also stress. Stress yeah. is terrible for you. And financial stress is one of the worst stresses that you can be under. So we really just thought that there had to be a better way. And we thought, how can we combine something that we absolutely love, fashion, mm -hmm. with a way to help, right? With a way to help people overcome these horrible situations that they're in. So we started with the name. The name. <laughs> so Shell, we had come up with a name that sucked. Yeah. Oh. It really sucked. What was the sucky name? 
Oh my god. Should gosh. we share it? I mean, yeah, we've never sure. shared it before. Yeah, we have. It's a pandemic. Go ahead. <laughs> oh, I thought that we kept that secret, but it was going to be gratitude garments. Oh god, it's so bad. Excuse me it's, for a moment. While it, I sounds, it. Yeah. it sounds like your grandmother's <laughs> <Yeah>. closet. <laughs> I feel better now. Yeah. Okay, thanks. Yeah. We we throw up in our mouths every it's time. It's so gross. Yeah. <laughs> it's mothballs. Yeah. It's gratitude's yeah. important, but gratitude yeah. is very important, yeah. but so bad. Our edgiest member, Katie, Katie, came up with Cancer Cartel. Yeah. And she had to sell us a little. Yeah. Like, what, what does it mean? I was like, it doesn't matter what well, it means. I was worried about even having cancer and cartel. Both words are such strong words. Yeah. I didn't want you to focus on cancer. I wanted yeah. you to focus on, on cartel. cartel. Yeah. yeah. So it really works. I it mean, works. It draws people in. Uh, it's it, genius. It, it drew me in. I. You know, yeah. I spend a fair amount of time on, on social media and I see lots of people tagging and sharing and whatever. And, and <clears throat> particularly, um, you know, I focus on parenting stuff and humor, yeah. relatable stuff, but also as a breast cancer survivor and pre-viver, I am yeah. interested um, in promoting awareness and prevention, as you know. And so your name jumped out at me. Like I got excited yeah. about it. Immediately clicked. I'm, I think it was on maybe, was it Rachel at Wine and Cheese? It's might have, might have shared. Yes, that is what yes. it was. Yeah. It. And I just, it was, you're right, the cartel is more powerful. Anything cancer, yeah. I think for me, it's just always on my radar. So it jumped out. Yeah. The word cartel has such, you know, sinister mm -hmm. connotations and powerful yeah. connotations that there, I knew there had to be something amazing behind it. And yeah. clearly, yeah. you know, there is. There so are. great. Yeah. <laughs> And from a branding perspective, it sounds much cooler than gratitude garments. I know. Oh my gosh. What so if we, you know yeah. what? anybody else wants to yeah. start gratitude garments? It's available. Go take it. You can have yeah. it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You're welcome. We, to we it. never bought the URL. Thank no, God. But so what we back in we... fashion, I worked in fashion marketing for a long time. So gratitude garments, uh, I I I <laughs> deflect that. And um, yeah, else about <laughs> it. can you tell everybody what the cancer cartel? primarily does, what its aim is, and what you'd like to see it do in the future. Yeah, so what we do is we help people with their finances going through cancer. So anyone can go on our website and apply for funding or for a grant. Um, and then we review those grants with our board of directors and we um, you know, provide money out to people. And we make it very easy. It's an easy form online on our website. Um, and to get to be able to give money, we actually need to make, you know receive money in. So there's also a donation out there on our website, we and we there's a donation button either to donate money or to donate clothing and accessories and um, bags and handbags and such. Um, we take designer luxury and we resell them on our website. So then you'll see a spot to go shopping. So there's many ways out there. You can donate the money. You can donate your clothing. You can shop. We have our own branded merchandise that we have. We're all wearing our tanks. Today. You can buy a tank top. Yeah. Oh, that's cute. And cute, we, right? And we have these cool sparkly straws that we sell. Um, there's lots of other cancer cartel stuff out Hats, there. Hats, water bottles. And 100% of it all goes back to people fighting cancer. So when you say 100% of it, so are you covering the cost of if there's anything that we have, if there's anything that we have to purchase, that does come. There's a small little, little bit of overhead. So yeah. it's pretty small, like any shipping that we have to send out, but it's right. pretty minimal. We're not paying ourselves yeah. anything for all of this. Okay. Um, our Gosh. our hope, and we, we know it's going to happen, is that someone's going to come in and want to fund us, our overhead. We're looking for they a benefactor. benefactor. Um, they'll, you know. Any benefactors out there? Sugar mama. Someone or a company <laughs> that wants a good write-off and wants believes in us three women. Mm -hmm. um, we're, we're here for it. So um, contact so, us. <laughs> so there's, I mean, I, it's, I wish I could be a benefactor because I can't think of a more, uh, you know, relevant and important organization to get behind simply because your intentions are so pure. Like you're saying, you don't even pay yourselves. You're just doing this because you really understand what the need is. Um, right. so you sell, you have merch. That's one way. Yep. But then we were talking about, you've got luxury items, fashion labels, brands. Yes. What's that? Yep. yep. So we have, um, you know, we'll accept anything in the luxury bracket. Obviously, we're always hoping for brands like Louis Vuitton and Chanel. and But there's also some really incredible up-and-coming luxury designers that we would <laughs> love to have, you know, their, their wonderful items as well. Um, 
So we have a few up on our website now, and we're actually have an event coming soon where we're expected to get quite a bit more that we'll be looking Next forward time. to having online. Um, you anybody who has a uh, a new or gently used designer, high end designer item, can donate yes. it to Cancer Cartel. Yes. There's yes. a way to ship it, and I assume very you've got, easy. You have like a a storage facility. Yeah. Yep. <clears throat> right and. You, see, you then go on to sell it. It's sort of like a consignment shop. Yeah. It's, so when Katie and I created the idea, our goal, what we imagined, was becoming the real real of the nonprofit space. So accepting, instead of consigning, accepting donations of these high-end, incredible, beautiful items, and then selling them, and instead of you know giving the money to the consigner, giving it to someone who's fighting cancer. Yeah. So <laughs> those, I mean, the, the turn is great <laughs> because there's very little cost associated with doing the resell. You know, there's a little bit of shipping cost involved, but um, other than that, that's a, it's a great way to generate revenue to help people. Mm -hmm. And you don't and always look at the profits, right? You don't even take the cut of what you sell. No. So, but you're getting, you're getting luxury items from you know, people All like me. Them. Let's say I had yep. a bag in my closet, which I do not. Yes. Uh, Just like you. <laughs> Just like me. But yes. also, you said that you turn to manufacturers, vendors, stores, if they've got merchandise that yes. they want to donate and I guess get a tax write off on. Yep. So that's a really great way for people to support us that maybe don't have a closet full of designer um, is corporate partnerships and sponsorships. Mm -hmm. We're partnered with a local auto group here who is donating $50 for every car sold in the month of October to us. So those types of partnerships. Shout are, out to Michael. Yeah, to shout Michael's out to Toyota's Michael's automotive you. group. Um, we, you know, those types of partnerships, we're partnering with um, a skincare line, a high-end skincare line called Immunicology. Incredible. And These, we'll be on a live with them later this afternoon. You have to tune in. It's amazing. <laughs> it's super. <laughs> you'll love it. Uh, and three are time. 3 p.m. Pacific. Uh, Pacific. 3 p.m. Pacific. So I guess six. six you'll be, yeah. yeah. It's okay. immunicology. They're very clean, um, <laughs> clean beauty. It's a, a breast cancer survivor who started the company. Yeah, she, cool. yeah she's she, really she, great. Yeah. But so those types of partnerships have really proven to be a way for us to really further our mission faster because yeah. that's a, it's a really quick and easy kind of hands-off way to be able to generate revenue, to be able to give away. And it costs us nothing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So it's it's been quite, it's gonna yeah. be great. October is yeah. gonna be a big month for us. So just tell, tell me a little bit about how you, um, you know, how do you, how do you decide how much to give somebody, someone needs more help than somebody else. That's, that'll be, I, I would imagine as you grow, um, a bigger and bigger concern is how do you make sure, how do you help as many people as possible? So yeah, well, what are your criteria? How, you know, what should people be sharing with you in order to get the help that they're looking for? We have a form that they fill out. So they put a little bit of information about themselves on that form. Mm -hmm. And then we ask them, um, our e first email back is asking them for an actual diagnosis sheet so that we can see, you know, just verify. We have to verify That's, that yeah. they have yeah. cancer. Unfortunately, there uh, are bad yeah. people out there and, and then we review that we put it all in a spreadsheet so we have all the information in a spreadsheet and we review that with our board of directors to go through <laughs> and when we have the funds available we will go through the list and you know disperse as needed we do try to give everybody a hundred dollar amazon gift card so that helps and um, we've been able to do that with everyone that has um sent in their diagnosis sheet we were able to send them a hundred dollar amazon yeah, gift card we do that in the interim until we can yes. get together yeah well, and you wouldn't believe it, Gila, like you wouldn't believe how much of an impact these $100 gift cards make. It's, it's remarkable. Yeah. I would story, though, because it's not just, it's not just the amount. It's the fact that somebody out there understands that you yes. are more than just um, somebody, a, a cancer patient, you know? Yeah. So I, I can just tell you briefly from my own experience, um, I'm a breast cancer pre and survivor, which means that mm -hmm. I... Um, I have the BRCA1 gene and my mom died at 42 and her mom died at 49. So breast cancer was on my radar. And um, in my <clears throat> early 30s is when I tested positive for the BRCA1 gene. And I knew that I would have a preventative double mastectomy like what Angelina Jolie did. But yep. before Angelina Jolie, so she copied yeah. me. Yeah, it's you cool. were a trendsetter. <laughs> I'm happy for her, whatever, fine. Uh, <laughs> she got 
she was more effective in getting the message out, but I'm trying to catch up with her. Um, but anyway, I found that, you know, what, something that happens when you're among a community, and I, I lived, thankfully, in a very warm, supportive, loving community, is everybody wants to help you with the cancer stuff. Um, do you need meals? Do you need someone to watch your kids? Do you need rides places? Do you need grocery shopping? And it all starts to feel very cancery and you want to feel normal like you just want to yes. get about your day you already have to go through this horrible treatment in my case you know i lost my hair my eyelashes my eyebrows and i tried hard <laughs> to mask that but there's so many indignities that you're suffering that mm -hmm. for someone to come to you and say here's 100 bucks go buy yourself something nice you know or yes. say yes to getting your kid that christmas toy that they wanted yes. instead of saying no and that's what it is it's about an, it's about an understanding you can't buy understanding, you know, that's no. something that, that somebody who's been through it, like you guys, like me, can say, I think I understand what you what you really need. You're getting what you need for the cancer stuff from elsewhere, but here's something that you, you didn't even know you needed. And that's right. why I yeah. do see how impactful these gifts can be. Yeah. Yeah, that's Thank a you. great way, to state, a great way to state it. We, didn't, yeah. we actually didn't even really think about that piece of it. No. That just like, yeah. you you're welcome. Yeah, yes. good job. You are amazing. Yeah. Clearly, you've worked yeah. in branding before. <laughs> I actually have a background in marketing, but I don't know. That's just, I'm just, I can only think from my own um, perspective. And I just before this um, met an old friend of mine who's also a breast cancer survivor. Her name is Tammy. Hi, Tammy. I think she's watching. Hi, she's hi Tammy. Hi, Tammy. <laughs> and um, we were, we were talking about things like this, um, you know, viewpoints and outlooks that only somebody who's been through it can have and it's not to say that you can't be supportive of somebody going through cancer if you haven't had it yourself you can be supportive but there's nothing quite like somebody saying i get it and yeah. i get whatever the feelings are even if they run the gamut from here to here yep you know i i just get it and there's a lot of comfort in that and that's what networks like this um are very good at, at doing too can you each tell me um sort of briefly about aside from starting cancer cartel how has having cancer shaped your life changed your life or not changed your life were you just like this before what impact has it had on you um, and the way you live in the world i'll say that um, definitely makes me a stronger person prior to cancer i would have called myself i was still do kind of a wimp I was scared of going to the doctor. I was scared of needles. I was just a whim. And now going through it, I mean, I'm still scared of that, some of that stuff, but I, one of my doctors, when I first got diagnosed I, and she knew that I was very scared and she held my hand and said, Shelly, I promised you're going to make this and you're going to come out stronger on the other side. And she's completely, I mean, that stuck with me the whole time through treatment. And it's so true to this day. I mean, I'm the stronger person because of what I went through. And I'm here to help others see that and get through that, um, definitely. And just That's to find perspective. and realize there's bigger things out in the world than um, your small little um, spreadsheets. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Katie? Oh, um, it's the same as Shelly, really. I think I Enjoy your snack. Uh, you did. <laughs> Are you eating the Halloween candy? I'm oh, liking morning candy right now. So. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, no, you just come out of it so much stronger. I mean, it does. It does change you. I, I was a wet. Me and Shelly were the same. I mean, I couldn't even go get my blood pressure taken without crying. Mm -hmm. Let me take this out. I just want to say <laughs> that about you guys. It's amazing because I know that's what's interesting is I'm meeting you at a time when you're post that, and I can't even picture you being like that because you uh, are who you are today. Yeah. Well, that's probably why we had to. Go through, it. go through it i guess i don't know our other two sisters are like badasses not even kind of afraid of needles they think we're ridiculous and then it was us that got the case. yeah so, funny the universe i came out of it a lot stronger and i know what i want to do now i want to help others so you're focused i'm focused yeah which is new for me <laughs> <laughs> but that's the point is you know experiences <sighs> The hope is that however hard they are, you just come out in some way improved on the other side. It doesn't mean that there isn't, you know, <clears throat> uh, residual damage or pain, um, but oh, you sure. live with that and you, you sort of take that pain and you mold it and make it into strength. So it's still made of pain and, and difficult experiences, but I'm careful not to say bad or negative experiences because I just think that um, 
you can learn and grow from every experience. And in my life, it's been the harder ones that have made me grow. Yep. You know, my mom died when I was young. My dad died when I was young. So we became these five orphans and we, we would get a lot of, you know, pitying looks and comments and we were the orphan people. But actually we are so self-sufficient and we are so resilient. Um, yeah. Five kids and we are all just, um, you know, th there's, a, there's a toughness there. And that was hard one. And I'm not saying that that's what you choose to get and that you know, that's how no. you choose to go about becoming the new person that you are. But, you know, I'm okay with it. And then we get to set examples for our kids and they may not have seen us go through those experiences, but they, they know what they're watching now. They're seeing women who are, you know, using their newfound sense of, you know, I don't want to say invincibility, that's, you know, that's dangerous, but just <laughs> channeling whatever the quote unquote bad stuff is into something good. And I think that that's yep. also setting the next generation on the right path. So Carrie, how has that or not changed you? You know, I, it's funny that you talk about your child because Ava <laughs> came out of Shelly's cancer journey, but my son is 20. So he's yeah. seen me be very, very sick with not just cancer. And he definitely, he's resilient and he will tell you, he's like, my mom's badass which I'm really proud of that. I'm really proud of him being able to share that. But I think that I've always had a generally positive personality. I think that's why I made it through all these crazy health things that happened to me. But what cancer did is cancer made me brave. And it made yeah. me take, you know, to try <laughs> things that I wouldn't normally try. And I will say this too, community. When I met these girls and we hit this idea, some of these big dreams that I have been holding back on are coming to, to fruition right now. Like things that I've always wanted to do, like be on a podcast, like that was a huge dream for me. Now we're on like podcast five or six. Like, mm -hmm. uh, and this is giving me the bravery to say, Carrie, you have the skills and you have the ability, like just freaking do it, just try. And I, yeah, I am so thankful for cancer. It's by far the best thing that's ever happened to me. And, you know, I know that sounds weird to say, but it's made me who I am. And I'm going to share this message with millions of people. And we're going to raise $11 million a year ooh, ooh, ooh. and give it away. Yep. I don't doubt it. I do not Cheers. doubt it. And Cheers. Cheers to know, 11 million. Cheers to $11 million. <laughs> Woo! Start donating, people. Every dollar yeah. counts. Yeah, because we're not quite there yet. Yeah, we're not, <laughs> we, have, we don't even have anywhere close to that. Almost. And we did just create something that's the newest way to to get involved that we didn't touch on so excited yeah. about it because it's super easy and we created a monthly pledge program you know like the good old folks at saint jude mm -hmm. um we have made it so you can pledge five dollars which is less than this iced tea cost me literally tiny, tiny yeah. little coffee and <laughs> you can pledge us five dollars a month and that's going to add up really, really quickly when there's many, many people. So that is the banner on our website. If you go to cancercartel.com, you click right on the banner and you can, you know, say that you support us $5 or 25 or 50 or a hundred. And um, I'm going to click on right after this live. I am inspired oh, well, because you're you. making it easy. You know, people are so busy and pulled and stressed and especially now when everyone's brains are just fried from this never ending yeah. situation. Um, I think that it's a really good feeling to know that you've done something good and you've made it easy. It's not something that I have to remember to do every month. It's automatic. Nope. It's, it's, it's a small enough amount that it's manageable and, yep. and you still, you have that, that dopamine rush of feeling like you're, you're doing yeah. something yes. good. And then there's also karma. You know, you never know when somebody exactly. making a donation may be, the one asking for help. Yeah, very true. So, yeah, that's, I mean, cancer is so prevalent, and you know it does. It, that that five dollars that it is. You're right, karma. That's a great way to put it. And I feel like it's it's going to become unfortunately more prevalent because you know I mean I live in the UK, and so I can tell you what my experience has been there. I'm actually in New York right now, but um, there early on in in the first lockdown around April, I know the NHS, the National Health Service, was placing these ads to tell people we're still open for business. You know, don't let your things that are worrying you fall by the wayside. Don't, don't think it's a bother to come in. I'm afraid that cancer diagnoses will go up because people are either staying away from doctors or hospitals or don't want to bother because it's not as important as 
as COVID. And the fact is that cash is not going anywhere. You know, it's no. still hanging around. So that's where the, that's why in general, I like to talk about breast cancer awareness and I can't focus on every single one. That's your guy's job. But for me, if I can just get a person here and a person there to have it on their radar, instead of only thinking about the insanity in the world, if they remember once a month to check themselves, right? Uh, that that goes a long way. As you know, early detection is key to a good prognosis and to survival. So, um, you know, your organization will just become more necessary and more important. So I hope everybody watching this is inspired to give in one way or another. There's many ways to support cancer. Yes. Yeah. So pick one of them. Um, <laughs> I wanted to ask you something else. Hold on, let me just see because I jotted down some notes. Um, yeah, so we talked about how people watching this can help and to get involved. What would you three like people to know about, you know, as people who've been through a cancer diagnosis and then treatment and then recovery, what would you like people to know about the cancer experience? How can somebody who hasn't been through it support, and I realize that everyone's different, but how can they support in a meaningful way somebody who is going through the chaos of finding out about the diagnosis and then um, having the treatment? Sure, that's a great question. I think one thing that I'd like to start with that I was not good at is as the patient, being brave enough to ask for help and being brave enough to share with the people around you that are, that are reaching out to you and want to be able to love you and want to be able to support you, being brave enough to say, you know what, I freaking need help and not trying to be a superwoman all the time. I mean, of course, it's important to be positive and put on a brave face and, you know, do all those things, but it's also really important. I mean, I was terrible at it. And it's one of, you know, I look back on that with regret that I didn't, I didn't accept the help that was being offered to me and I didn't ask for it when I needed it. Yeah, that's true. And I'll just say, I mean, being on both sides of it, being the cancer <laughs> patient and then also supporting Katie as a cancer patient. I think a lot of times it's harder being that support side. Um, you feel, you feel very hopeless. You can't do, you feel like you can't do a lot with them or for them. Um, and as when you're going through cancer, I mean, you're just like, you know what you have to do and you don't think about it too much. You just like, you're doing it. Right. So it's, I feel like, I mean, I, and I stayed very upbeat and very positive through mine. And I think that's harder to do when you're on the other side, trying to like pump someone else up. It takes a lot of energy, I feel like, but I feel like just being there for them. Um, and as a cancer patient, like Carrie said, ask for help. Um, but just, I mean, like I very much appreciated, I got so many cards and stuff in the mail and the snail mail, like people would actually <laughs> mail me cards How and that really, problem. that really touched me. I mean, that was amazing. I'm sure it's just the same as like getting a text message now, but, um, yeah, I think just letting people know that you're out there and you're willing yeah. to help. I think Katie has a good, why well, like, yeah, I like, um, people, People are always like messaging you. And my one thing I would say to people that are trying to help somebody fighting cancer, sometimes like we're not in the, we're not looking for a conversation. So don't necessarily text me like, how was your treatment today? Are you like, then I have to answer back and then it, then you're coming back again. You know what I mean? And then it's a back and forth and I'm really tired. So sometimes I would just wouldn't respond. So maybe it's a better way just to say, Hey, I'm thinking about you. I love you. I dropped soup off on your porch. Like don't even bother coming out, you know, yeah. like, don't make me feel like I have to like engage in a convert. I, yes. I love that you're thinking about me and I appreciate it and everything, but like, it I don't doesn't... necessarily have the energy to have a full blown conversation with you right now. Cause there's a lot of people texting. Well, and it makes you feel you know? pressure. Yeah, it makes you feel pressure that you're not, I feel bad. Like I'm not texting back, but if I do text back, they're going to text back again with it. I'm so glad. Is there anything I can do? You know what I mean? It just, yeah. it starts a back and forth that like I'm too tired yeah. for. And just do it. Like just make me the vegan yeah. soup and drop it off. I, and it's on your porch. I love you. Don't worry about coming out. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, don't this the pressure of like, bring me a blanket that you, you knitted me. Yeah. Cause I know drop it off. And I know people are worried. So you do, you have guilt that you're not giving them enough. Yeah. yeah. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. So somebody yeah. once, um, uh, just described this, I don't know who coined the term, but there's something called the ring theory where, um, the person who is enduring the, uh, the challenging time or the trauma is at the center of the ring. And with each ring that uh, moves away from that center, um, those people become have less and less access to the person at the center of the ring. And what that means is that 
you know, you as the person undergoing treatment at the center of the ring can call the shots. So if your style is to have everybody call you and show up and pile in and ask you a million questions and you want to, some people want yeah. to be on their phone texting yeah. all day. Yeah. Um, or they start a blog to let people know, you know, updates. Yeah. Some people want that and some people thrive on it. And other people, um, I know for me, I just wanted to keep things as normal as possible. I had four little kids at the time. They were one, three, five, and seven. Oh. And, yeah, they were little. And I, and because I wasn't expecting it, because I had been preventative and there the cancer was anyway, I felt really um, angry and frustrated, um, somewhat ashamed, almost like I'd failed what I tried. And I was going through all this treatment that I had, had surgery in order to avoid. And so what I didn't want was I wanted everyone to just be normal. So my closest friends understood that. And they wouldn't even make a comment about, you know, I, I wore a hat and a wig. And they wouldn't even yeah. say, like, oh, your hair looks really good. Just pretend I'm just like you. And yeah. that's what I really needed. And, mm -hmm. you know, not somebody that was a woman in the neighborhood who once yelled across the street because she had had cancer years before. And she asked me what my white blood cell count was in front of my oh kid. My and I was like, like we got to go inside now. Uh, yeah. What is wrong with people? So when you're at the center of the ring, you get to decide yeah. what support you want and what support you don't want. And I think what can be very difficult for people, especially the further out they get from the ring, because they don't feel like they're in and everybody mm -hmm. wants in on the drama for good yeah. reason. I don't think, you know, I don't think that there's malicious intent. I really think everybody wants yeah. to be helpful. Uh, yeah. So yeah, the for question sure. I always I would recommend that people ask themselves is, who are you doing this thing for? Are you doing it for the person or are you doing it for yourself? Because if you're doing it for yourself, maybe don't. Yeah. And yeah. Listen to yeah. what the person's saying. And if I'm if I'm saying I don't want a meal tonight, I want to cook dinner, I'm not being a hero. I feel well enough to cook dinner and I want to give my kids that dinner because maybe tomorrow night I won't. Yeah. Right. So yeah. I, my advice would be for people to really listen to what the person going through it wants. And the other thing I tell people, you know, I get quite a few um, phone calls and messages from people who either have breast cancer, have a family member or friend who has it and ask if they can speak to me and with the greatest of pleasure, like I'll talk about it all day long <laughs> and I'll, I'll try to gauge that person's personality and see what it is yeah. that they want to hear. But the one thing I'll tell them is that generally these are people who are married or in a relationship. I'll say, make sure that somebody is supporting your spouse or partner. Yes, that's a great I found about. with my husband, all the focus was on me and my husband, who's an extraordinary person and is supportive in ways that I only wish on everybody else. He's just, he just, he anticipates my needs, you know, when I don't, I don't even know what they are. But the toll that it took on him was, he was working and supporting yeah. financially and picking yep. up slack where, when I, when I felt weak, for the most part, I felt pretty okay or I made myself feel pretty okay. But there were times when I didn't and I'd be sleeping yeah. um, for days. So, if my, you know, my friends would get involved and help too. But for my husband, he was dealing with all of this extra stress, plus keeping me calm. You know, if I started to get my panties up in a bunch that right. the floor wasn't clean the way I wanted to, because that's something <laughs> I can control, unlike the camera, um, he had to deal with that stress. And on top of that, people were always asking him, how's Gila, how's Gila, how's Gila? And, yes. and I think it was only a few good friends who knew to ask him, how are you? Take him out for a beer. So I'll yeah. always tell people, make sure that somebody is there to support your supporter um understand that they're going through something too but they're probably going to hold their emotions back because they're going to put yours at the forefront so those are the two things that i like to tell people they're they're very they're very actionable they take a little bit of um an altering of a mindset because our mindsets tend to lead us in the other direction they tend to make us want to do something for the person whether they want it or not and they yeah. tend to make us focus on the person going through the thing. Um, but yeah, so those are the two things that I, I would say to people, anybody out there. That's Let's, great stuff. Yeah. Um, yeah. So before we wrap up, is there anything else that you guys want to say about the cancer cartel? Like maybe just remind everybody how to get involved, how to support what your website is. Obviously follow, follow the Cancer Cartel. Yes, follow, follow us on Instagram, please. They have a beautiful page. It's so beautiful, Brandy. It makes me ashamed of my own page like mine is just no yours is great pink and but it's not even pink it's like it's like an elegant blush. Blush. thank you it's a blush it is not mob like gratitude it's garments. not mob yeah it's, it's, not mob. And it's not pink ribbon it's i think we mob. we all connected because we understand that we're we're not such pink ribbony people 
And that's no. We can have another time about the whole being associated with um, a specific color that you don't necessarily want to be associated yes. with. Yeah. But um, let's just remind everybody watching to A, follow the cancer cartel, and B, give us a quick wrap up on how people can help. Yeah, for sure. Go to our website, www.cancercartel.com. It tells you all about all the ways to be involved. Mm -hmm. So you can subscribe to a monthly you know, pledge, which would be incredible. It will tell you how to send us luxury donations. You can Buy shop tanks. our luxury donations or our cute mm -hmm. cancer cartel tanks and hats and tees that we have now. Um, also, if you have a brand and you can, you know, you want to support us by, you know, doing a co-branding strategy or something like that, we're always open to ideas. If you have a brilliant idea of what you, something you think we could do to raise revenue to help people, share with us. We're open to ideas. Yeah, you can contact us, um, DMs. We're always, we reply as quickly as we can to DMs or our email. I can vouch it. for that, they do. Yeah. <laughs> we try. We try. Um, or yeah, just email. Our email is super simple too. It's cancercartel at gmail.com. So just Gila, thank you so much. Like we just want to tell you, we think you are a badass. You are an incredible woman. We're so grateful to know you. This was so much fun and we can't wait to get it shared on our page and on our YouTube so people can watch it again. The feeling yeah, is entirely, entirely mutual. What? Good. I was just reminding people that we're on Instagram, Facebook, YouTube as well, and Pinterest. And Pinterest. They're everywhere. So yeah. first of all, follow them. Second of all, subscribe to the newsletter. Third of all, buy the merch. Fourth of all, if there are any uh, corporate sponsors out there or people who have access to corporate sponsors, maybe consider this um, as an option for sponsorship. And raid your closets if you've got some beautiful Lenzy bag that no one's going anywhere these days, so you don't really need it. Right. <laughs> send it to these guys and they'll sell it and you know make somebody's life easier who's going through cancer treatment and obviously um i just want to wish everybody out there good health and good fortune and peace of mind and thank god for people like you who are there to offer support to people when they're not experiencing all of those good things that i just said well thank, thank you. you and thank you're doing you the same much. awesome okay hey guys thanks Bye, for Gila, in, everybody. Bye. Bye.